Welcome back to Broken Sylvia. My name is Damien and as you guys have seen that have been following the R34 rebuild, you have seen that it has been many, many months of sanding and preparing the car for paint. But I'm happy to say that all those jobs are finally done. Welcome back to Broken Sylvia, my name is Damien and in this episode we are going to be revealing the colour of the R34 Skyline but before we get to that, this car right here is kind of responsible for the start of the YouTube journey if you may call it but unfortunately it's not my dream car, I like it and it turned out really nice had a bunch of help from friends to build it but I've always dreamed about owning a Bayside Blue R34 Skyline and I'm happy to bring you guys along this journey as my dream slowly starts becoming a reality. So there we have it, that is the big color reveal. Now, I did use a little bit of a clickbaity title this time. Apparently that's what every other kid on YouTube does. So, hope you guys are happy with my color decision. I know everybody wanted midnight purple, but go watch the previous episode and you'll understand why I didn't want to paint the car midnight purple. It's been such a big dream of mine to have a Bayside Blue R34 that I couldn't pass up on it. There was just no other color except red. Um, but in the back of my mind, I always knew that I just had to paint it blue. If I get another opportunity ever to build another Skyline, I would love to paint it red. Um, I, I do think that red might look better on the car just because it's a little bit more rare. Every other Skyline is Bayside Blue, so making mine different to others out there, it's going to be really, really tricky. Um, but I can promise you once the car is done and driving, what I'm going to do with the car has pretty much never been done before and especially documented and posted on YouTube. So it's gonna be a really, really wild journey. Um, this video, we're about to start, and the footage is kind of, you know, it's been a lot of work. Now, I'm not complaining, I'm just saying, because some of the shots uh, might, be, might not be up to standard like in the previous episodes. So just bear in mind that it's very tricky to spray a car and film it along the way, but I've tried my best and anything I say in this video also don't think that it's 100% correct because at the end of the day I'm a 20 year old with no experience this is a hobby I'm trying to build my car on a budget a dream car on a budget um, this is the second car I've ever sprayed that's about it also don't feel discouraged about not having a spray booth to spray in. I hired a spray booth anybody can hire a spray booth um, but at the end of the day, remember that the S14 was sprayed under a gazebo in an, aban in an abandoned shed. And to be honest, I think that Sylvia has less dust in the, in the paint than this thing does coming out of a spray booth. So there you have it. Let's get this video rolling. So 
So all the parts and the car are in primer as you can see. Now you don't want to directly spray paint over this rough textured surface. The primer is there to fill in any holes, dimples and stuff like that and you want to make sure that this primer is sanded flat and smooth. Now you might be asking yourself how do I do that? Now I've already gone through this in a previous episode I believe but anybody that is new to the channel or maybe missed out on it I'll go through it again. Pretty much as you can see I'm applying this black powder which is called a guide coat. I'm pretty sure it's just like powdered graphite or something like that and what that'll do is it'll show you the high spots and the low spots. Now you want to sand all that out with using 320 grit dry sandpaper. That'll make sure that this panel is nice and flat and obviously you want to be using some form of sanding block and in my case I'm using a speed file because it's nice and long. Now you don't want to spray over those 320 scratches even though your primer is nice and flat. So what you want to do or actually what I've been doing, I'm sure there are many other ways of doing it, is you want to reapply the guide coat and just quickly wet sand it with 600 grit wet and dry sandpaper. What this will do is obviously the panel is now nice and flat but the second application of the guide coat is going to show you the 320 grit sand marks. Hope that makes sense. So let's just say that this is day two. We loaded the car up onto the trailer, strapped it down and I drove it over to the space shop where I'm going to be hiring their spray booth. Took the car off the trailer, pushed it into the workshop and all the parts were put on trestles. After that it was time to start cleaning up the parts before masking. What I was told is you want to give the parts a quick little clean with some prep sole, also known as waxing grease remover. For the sake of this video to keep it nice and short, we're just going to use the word prep sole for waxing grease remover. So we prep sold all the parts once or twice, then it was time to start masking up the areas that we don't want paint on. So that's what we did. So with all the parts masked up and in the spray booth, it was time to quickly run down to my local paint shop, which is Hames Paint in O'Connor. I'd like to give them a huge shout out for supporting the show and supplying all the paint for the car. And the paint system we are using is called Protec. I believe it's a, it started off as an Australian uh, paint manufacturer and it was later on bought out by PPG, which pretty much everybody has heard of. It's a 2K base, clear, like the whole system. No acrylic, no enamels, so it's, uh, it's the good stuff. Again, huge shout out to them, and if you're in Perth and you're wanting to paint your car, definitely pay them a visit. Say, Damien from Broken Sylvia sent you there, and they'll look after you.
so now that we've picked up all our painting supplies, it's time to go back in the paint booth. Now, before I left, you've seen me clean the panels once or twice, mask them up, and then we magically disappeared to go pick up some Bayside Blue and some other painting supplies. And now we are back again and we are cleaning. Now, I know that this is very, very repetitive, but soon we are going to shoot some paint onto these panels. But I wanna make sure that anybody watching and anybody that is wanting to do this job at home or themselves, make sure that these panels are nice and clean. Now you've spent days, weeks, maybe even months preparing your body panels um, for, for paint and the last thing you would want to do is have a bit of grease or dirt on these panels that can have a weird reaction with the paintwork so make sure you thoroughly clean every single piece um, or part and yeah so that's my recommendation So why the white base coat you might be asking yourself. So we'll geek out into the white base coat in this video and then we'll geek out into the blue base coat in the next video. So pay attention. You use a white base coat to cover, for example, anywhere you've gone through the primer and stuff like that. Then you put the blue over the top and you get what you see in front of us today. Okay, now if I used a gray base coat instead of that white base coat, and put the blue over the top, that might actually make this shade of blue a little bit darker. Now, you can go, you can spray a few test cards with different colored base coats, white, gray, black, metallic, silver, or whatever. Um, but then again, a test card is small compared to a huge car for you to actually know what it's going to look like out in the sun. Now, every Instagrammer loves a cheeky little filter, so going off Instagram photos and asking people what year your R34 GDR is, isn't a very reliable um, source of information. But there was a video, and there still is a video up on YouTube, probably one of my favorite videos, of an R34 Skyline getting rebuilt from start to finish. And you see this car use a white base coat, a base side blue, and then the clear coat. And I was like, this is the only source of information that I can genuinely say that that is the shade of Bayside Blue that I would like. Because the, the, the video was most likely filmed with an iPhone, slapped together with a bit of music, and it didn't have any fancy filters or any fancy color correction and stuff like that. So, and you could see the car under, in the spray booth, you could see the car out, outdoors. So 
that is literally the only reason I use the white base coat, just because I know that I want my car to look exactly like that one in the video. Hope that makes sense. All right, so as you can see, you just wanna keep that gun moving. Now, if you move too fast, you're not going to get really good coverage, and if you move too slow, you risk getting a paint run in the base coat. Now, getting a run in the base coat is actually more difficult than you think. You can go pretty heavy on it, especially if the weather is nice and warm outside. On this specific day, I believe it was about 30 or maybe a little bit over degrees Celsius, so the spray booth definitely saw temperatures of about 35 degrees. Now. Those sort of temperatures are definitely not recommended to be painting, but because we're only doing the inside body panels, it doesn't really matter. You definitely would not want to be painting a whole car in these sort of conditions. So three coats of the Bayside Blue covered the white paintwork and it was time to move on to clear coating. Now, you want to keep the gun at about 15 centimeters or a hand spam away and yeah, just start clear coating. Two coats of clear coat will definitely be enough. And again, you wanna be careful with the clear coat because it is easy to get runs in it. But in saying that, it was a warm day, so it was pretty forgiving. Now, how you lay the clear on is how it's going to stay. So once the clear coat is on, don't go back and just do little touch-ups here and there because once the overspray kind of settles, you're gonna get more dull finish. So just Go across and just let it be. If you need to do a third coat, do a whole coat. Don't just kind of like spritz it and touch up things because as I said, you're gonna get like a like an uneven patchiness that you're gonna to have to most likely block back and give it a bit of a polish. And doing that job on inside body panels is mission impossible. So try get it looking good straight off the gun. I'm 
making money plotting. Going up, yeah, I just elevated. Staircase, I'm headed to the paper prefer. This is how I folded plays. Now we gone, let them serenade. I see the chief for better days. I be down and out. I need a change. I flip it into a dollar. Flip with my people, fuck that hatred. They dismissing evil. Yeah, we all equal. I point out the obvious. They carbon, they copy us. Rose gold, the neck is decorated. Scream the power to the populace. Want it all, but nothing opposite. Yeah, cause these days, I've been doing things my way. People following from the start will know how destroyed this engine bay was and how much time it took to get it actually shaped properly and in primer. But I'm happy to say that all the hard work is well worth it because the engine bay looks very nice now. So the exact same process, two coats of the white base coat followed by the three coats of Bayside Blue. Now before I lay the clear on, I've turned the lights off in the spray booth and I'm going around with just a, a light to double check that the blue has covered properly. The moment I'm happy with the coverage, which I am, I'm going to start laying on the two coats of clear coat and then we can unmask the parts, unmask the car, block the car back and paint it finally so that's what we're gonna do right now
So we are at the end of another episode and you might be asking yourself, when is the next episode coming out? And today is the 7th of December, it's a Saturday, it's 10 p.m. So I gotta go home, play around with this video and see if I can even get it out by the 8th of December, which is a Sunday. If I do, that's sweet. I've never done the light painting editing, so that might take some time. If there's no light painting editing, you know I've failed miserably. Um, but yeah, will the next episode be out by the 15th of December? I really hope so. Now they stuffed up our exams at university, so we we have to reset the exam. It's like a take home sort of thing. So that might play a big role in whether that video will be out on the 15th or not. Now, the car turned out pretty good if you ask me. Again, they cut easy, all right? Stuff like that, the panel gaps and stuff, it's just been slapped together for this video. The whole car is pretty much gonna get disassembled again because there's a lot more work to be done, especially in the front end. Engines to be put in and stuff like that so the parts don't get scratched up. Um, yeah, if you've gotten this far in the video, awesome. Glad you're maybe enjoying the content, maybe you're just hating it. Um, but yeah, I would really like to get some feedback. So don't ask of you to subscribe, don't ask of you to like the videos or comment or anything. Um, but what I really do want is I want feedback on how to improve these videos. Uh, you're, j just you saying there's something missing in the video. One of the guys, I can't remember, it's too hard to dig through the comments. One of the guys was like, there is something missing in your videos and I was reading, I was reading, I was reading and I got to the bottom of it and he's like a host. Now, as you know, every video we're going to end with I hate talking to a camera. So me being a host of the show, I'm gonna have to learn because that was like kind of like an eye opener. I was like, true, like there is no host for this show. It's just me with a few little voiceovers playing around with the camera, documenting the journey of rebuilding this car. So I'm going to work on that. Again, if you hate the music, if you like the music, if you have any suggestions, feel free to comment below. I read all the comments and what you think might be a silly idea might trigger something in my brain where I'm like, well, maybe we could do something on the lines of that, you know? So having a bunch of people watch the videos and a bunch of people throwing suggestions can only make the videos better. Again, constructive criticism is fine. If you hate my voiceovers or something, drop it in the comments below, I'll read it, that's fine. We'll make them better. Um, so yeah, again, if you like this sort of content, drop a comment, tell me what I'm doing wrong or what I'm doing right, consider subscribing. I've got a video to edit so you guys can watch tomorrow. Catch you later.